Welcome everyone, my name is Shahid Safrani and I'd like to present to you our latest work in the Neural Intelligence Lab in collaboration with the lab of Andreas Tolius. Since 2012, deep learning has shown to be very good at object recognition, reaching a human performance when trained on standard images. However, since then several studies showed that on distorted images these networks often fail, unlike biological brains. And recent work has demonstrated that regularization with neural data can actually improve the robustness of ne neural networks to these low-level distortions. And vice versa, one work from the lab of James DiCarlo showed that robust networks tend to be better at neural response prediction. Motivated by this, we investigate here one approach through which we try to directly transfer robustness from biological to artificial neural networks by multitask learning on monkeys' primary visual cortex. For our experiments, we use the VGG19 architecture with batch normalization layers to perform object recognition on the tiny ImageNet dataset, and to combine it with monkey v1 prediction, we cut off the VGG at layer conf31, from which we learn a linear regression between the model features of that layer to predict each neuron individually, as this layer has been shown to predict v1 well. Thus, the weights of the early layers here in yellow are optimized for the two tasks at the same time, and by fitting them to neural data, the network will learn brain-like representations, and that might be leading to a better generalizing network for object recognition. To evaluate our approach, we took a variant of the tiny ImageNet test set to which we apply the common corruptions from ImageNet C. Here you can see some examples. And to investigate our approach, we compare five different models. First is the baseline, where we train the VGG on the standard tiny ImageNet to obtain a classification baseline. And for comparing to a robust baseline, we train the VGG on distorted images. But how robust can we expect to be if only the first n layers of a network are made robust by, as by our co-training? Well, this is the reason why we freeze the early part up to conf31 in the robust network and retrain the rest only on standard images. This is our Oracle model. And to recap, for the baseline, there are clean images only. And for the Oracle, there are noise augmented until conf31 and clean images afterwards. The third model is our multitask learning oracle. We do this to find out whether NTL can transfer robustness at all. And for that we use the frozen part to generate responses by fitting a linear regression on top to predict the spike counts per neuron from the robust features. Following that, we generate the responses to all tiny image net images. As a result, we use the generated responses to co-train with in the MTL oracle model. To recap, in our MTL oracle, we show uh, clean images but we predict neural responses that, gener that are generated from robust features. Our fourth and most important model is our MTL with real V1 data. Here we use a model fully trained on monkey V1 to generate the responses instead, with which we co-train our MTL monkey model. And finally, as a control, we shuffle the neural training set across images resulting in MTL shuffled. We tested these models on tiny image net test set with different types of corruptions, grouping these types in four categories on the x-axis, whereas on the y-axis it is the robustness score for the different models. The 100% score refers to the baseline, so if models have successfully learned robust features, the score should be above the baseline. Now I'll show you my final results. Our Oracle model and our two MTL models have shown clear robustness gains. The MTL with shuffled monkey data did not improve meanwhile as expected. The MTL Oracle model behaves very similar to the Oracle model, indicating that our MTL approach can transfer robustness features to a different model. And finally, and most importantly, our MTL monkey is also able to generalize, to generalize better and become more robust. I want to emphasize here our MTL monkey has not seen any distorted images during training. Taken together, our MTL approach seemed to be successful. If we average across all noise types, this becomes even clearer. We believe that the gains in robustness are the result of a successful transfer of robust features from neural data to our model. By that logic, we would also expect that a model that can predict our neural data well will also be more robust. And that's why we check here for any correlation between neural performance on monkey v1 and robustness, which we can see on the x and y axis respectively. As a result, we notice that the more brain-like the MTL monkey model, the more robust it is to corruptions, which corroborates our hypothesis. In summary, we add new evidence to the literature supporting that it is indeed possible to transfer useful inductive biases on the representational level. Looking for very much forward to the discussion of any details with you. Thank you.